Welcome to the show, SJ. Thank you so much for coming on today. How are you? Are you excited? Hi, I'm very much excited. I'm doing great. Very happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me on. (laughs) I couldn't think of anyone else, honestly, to do this with me because you and I both, both love the Bridgerton series, um, but specifically um, The Viscount Who Loves Me, which is book two. And um, just to kind of walk you and our listeners of how we're going to do today's episode, because we're going to talk about both the entire series and The Viscount Who Loved Me, we're going to talk about the books briefly, rank them, and then go into um, The Viscount Who Loved Me and the predictions that we have for the show. How does that sound? Perfect. I'm very excited. Okay. So to set the scene for everyone, the Bridgerton series happens to follow the Bridgerton clan. They are a family of eight with their mother, the sort of the, she is, she takes on the mother and father role of this entire series. Um, her husband passes away. He's not included in the series, but each book follows one of the kids. And so as most of us are familiar, book one, which is the Duke and I, follows Daphne and Simon. And book two, which is season two, that is Anthony's story and Kate. And so to start off today's episode, we're going to rank the entire Bridgerton series from from least to our most loved. So basically, because there are eight books, it's going to be from eight to one. And you can talk about little parts of the book that you enjoy of each book and why. And then I'll tell you my top eight. Okay. So why don't you start us off as say rank the books from one to eight. Okay. I'm very nervous, but here are my rankings. So eight is The Duke and I. I think that book is very boring I think it's a bit problematic and I did not enjoy it at all I think the show did a better job of portraying that story at number seven we have we when he was wicked with his Francesca story um I do not like Francesca I think Michael is hot but otherwise that book had absolutely no conflict and I was not rocking with it at six I have On the Way to the Wedding which is Gregory's story he's the youngest of the clan his book was Honestly, I don't remember his book, and I think that says enough. At number five, I have Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, which is Colin's book. This book was good, but I think when I like friends to lovers, I don't like when the girl is the one who's been in love with the guy the whole time. I like it vice versa. Just preference. In number four, I have It's In His Kiss by Hyacinth, or that's Hyacinth's book. I love Hyacinth. I love her relationship with everyone around her. I love her as a character. I love her and Gareth. Um, There's like a mystery aspect to that book that just was so freaking cute. Then I have An Offer to a Gentleman, which is Benedict's story at number three. This is a Cinderella retelling. And honestly, Benedict was tapped in from the very beginning. And I love that he was chasing Sophie the entire book. Um, That was like my favorite thing. And she was saying no at every turn. And he was not taking no for an answer. And it was just, but in the way he did it was so freaking cute. And obviously, like all of society and their rules was very much against them and their union. And they still defied all the odds which I loved. And then my top two are obviously The Vice Count Who Loved Me, which is why we're here today, and To Sir Philip With Love. I think these are tied for number one because I love them both for very different reasons, but I don't think I could put one above the other. And with To Sir Philip With Love, one, Eloise is very relatable to me. She feels like a part of me. I definitely self-inserted the entire time she is holy herself she's loud she's stubborn she's opinionated she's boisterous um and i love that she's not willing to settle for one being the person that everyone around her wants her to be and like society wants her to be and two she's not willing to settle for a man that's not perfect for her and i love that she says there's so many guys and men who have proposed to her that were perfect in terms of like what society deems as the perfect man but they're not perfect for her and she refuses to settle and she would rather like live alone than be with a guy that she's not head over heels like thinks is like that's it and I relate to that a lot and Sir Philip he's quiet he's introverted and for a lack of better descriptions he's very much on the outskirts of society 
um, and he prefers botany over people and plants over people. He's very awkward. He's very shy. He's not really interested in anyone around him except for Eloise. And I love when a man has laser focus on his woman. And I genuinely think with both to Sir Philip with love and like um, the vice count who loved me, I think Anthony and Sir Philip are the type of men that if I imagine myself married, like sometime in the future, inshallah, like they're the type of men that I would want. Um, so I love them. And there's just one specific scene though in To Sir Philip with Love that had me tapped in. And it's when they're about to get married and Eloise is not very convinced in why Sir Philip likes her. And he to prove it to her, he like takes her aside in this room, away from everyone else. He kisses her and he says, um, he kisses her. He pulls back his face, and when she's like, what? Like, what's going on? He's like, I want, I wanted to see you. You're always in motion. I don't get to just see you. You're so beautiful. Do you know what I thought when I, for, when I saw you for the first time? She shook her head, and he goes, I thought I could drown in your eyes. I thought I could drown in you. And that was it for me. So that's my ratings. Lou, go ahead. Tell me yours. Um, but yeah, that's my one to eight to one. Okay, so my ratings are kind of similar to yours. At number eight, we have the Duke and I, uh, simply because they were very a lackluster couple, both Simon and Daphne very boring. Even though the conflict was real, um, it felt very underdeveloped. I think the show did a better job at rectifying that problem that they had. Um, I'm sure everyone knows what it is at this point. It, you know, it has to do with them having children and you know, Simon not wanting to have children. I think the show, like I said, does it a little bit better than the book. The book to me was, I'm. it was obvious that it wasn't published recently because it's problematic, like you said. Um, and then on at number seven, we have On the Way to the Wedding. This is the, the last book in the series. It did feel like at this point, the story of the entire series was kind of fizzling out. And Gregory's story was, it, you know, there's, these are big shoes to fall, especially when book two was, Anthony's story and he had such a big big sort of dramatic story and even with Benedict like they it was very dramatic and it matched their personalities unfortunately on the way to the wedding was kind of again not very memorable to me cute but not memorable number six um romancing Mr. Bridgerton which is Colin's story I love that Penelope gets her moment in the sun um we obviously know that she is um She's Lady Whistledown, and I, I, as much as I love that character couple, um, the way that that was unraveled was very unrealistic to me. I feel like if a woman who was friends with everyone was found out to be, you know, writing a column, I don't think that she would be protected. But again, these are like the logistics that I have gotten, you know, hung up on. So that's why it's sitting at number six. At number five, we have an offer from a gentleman. Like I've said before, um, I don't care for Sophie. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the Cinderella retelling. I like Benedict's character. I, I enjoy him. Um, I like a quiet type, especially there's a scene in the book closer to the end where he kind of has this outburst. Um, and I love that. I thought that was so hot. And so this is why it's at number five. And then I have at number four, When He Was Wicked, which is Francesca's story. And Francesca, it follows, again, another rake, Michael. Um, like, you did mention that Michael is much much more attractive and much more interesting than Francesca. And I do kind of agree. Um, but I kind of like the second chance for both of them. I enjoy that kind of coupling. I personally love when, like, two, when someone is more in love with the other person and they, from afar, they observe them from afar because they respect whatever relationship they have going on. And again, it is a second chance romance, kind of, maybe. It depends on who you ask. So, but that's why it's at number uh, number four. And number three is Hyacinth story. And it's in his kiss. I love, I loved Hyacinth's character. I feel like, um, again, it's another rake, but similar to um, Eloise's story. And Eloise is obviously in the top two for me, like, like you. Um, she's very much like Eloise in that she's smart and outspoken. She's very fearless. Um, 
Gareth uh, St. Clair, who is, um, you know, the male lead in that book, has this mystery to solve, so to speak. And what I pref- like specifically love about this story, and this is why it's at number three for me, is her relationship with Lady Danbury. I I kind of like that dynamic. Lady Danbury is a very interesting uh, secondary character, but she's made to be very important. Um, and so I, I like that kind of dynamic because at this point, like, it seems that everyone else and the timelines kind of cross over. So, you know, forgive me if I like misspeak, but at this point, there's a lot going on in the Bridgerton clan and nothing is happening in Hyacinth's life. And so for her to have her mini adventure, as much as her sisters and her brothers have been, you know, leading these dramatic lives. Um, I, again, I love Hyacinth's story. She's definitely in my top three. And then number two, uh, to Sir Philip with love, very much like you, I loved Eloise and I think it was so smart of her to be removed from society because that was very much the bane of her existence. In every single book, she always seemed to be the outlier. She wasn't her sisters. She wasn't, you know, she never fit in. She was friends with like her only friend was Penelope. And so it made so much sense for her to exist as a character by herself and explore this relationship with Sir Philip. And I think it's also important to note that they had a relationship prior like they were pen pals and I love, love, love that aspect um, that they communicated purely. Um, they just by writing and they still ha- were able to develop this deep relationship for one another. And then, of course, why we're all here today, the Viscount Love Me. We'll talk about that later uh, in more detail, but that is my rating. The Viscount Who Love Me and Just Fur Up With Love, perfect from start to finish. If you put a gun to my head, I could not tell you what was wrong with them exactly that's why for me they're tied like i genuinely couldn't pick between them two like and i feel like i'm picking between my children <laughs> now that we've gotten that off our chests we're going to talk about why we are here the, <laughs> the best story in the whole series the viscount who loved me so Esther and I are going to take turns talking about the book. We're going to talk about it in acts. And then we're going to give our own predictions, what we think is going to happen, what we're looking forward to. Um, this is super exciting. I loved I loved this book, as I'm sure you guys are aware. Just to let you know, there will be spoilers. Um, but if you haven't read it, either pause right here, go back to the book and read it, and then come back here. or listen to the spoilers and then read it again because I am sure that we will not do it justice um, as much as we love it read the book so the Viscount who loved me follows Anthony Bridgerton and Kate Sheffield of course in the show as we all know Kate is um, Daisy she's South Asian her name is Sharma and but in the book it is Kate Sheffield and she is older and she, at this point in her life, mind you, she isn't old by our our standards, but she's old by, you know, Regency era England standard. Um, she is now pretty much a chaperone for her sister. Edwina is younger. She is sweeter. She is not jaded. And she has been tasked to sort of unofficially vet all the suitors that come through to to meet Edwina. One of these suitors happened to be Anthony Bridgerton. And even though she is younger than Anthony, they kind of match each other's energies in terms of being the eldest. They have always been responsible for someone or something during their lives. And I think that's why they butt heads at first. Because they're so similar. And she sees right through him. And he sees right through her. Obviously, there is a lot of miscommunication. And that makes for great tension, as as I'm sure we love. Um, but that's the first couple of chapters of the book. We, Anthony's intention is to get married without love. And then Kate is watching him around her sister and realizing this and trying to protect her sister as much as he is this great catch and any woman would be 